hey guys so today we're gonna be making some shrimp roti and I'm gonna be stuffing it with some pumpkin if you've never tried your roti with some stewed pumpkin you need to give it a try Okay, so I'm gonna start by making the filling that we're gonna use to stuff the roti skin, the dal puri. So first, you're gonna get a pot, and in the pot, you're gonna add some water and some split peas and let that come to a boil. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of turmeric powder and salt to the split peas. Then you wanna cover it and let it come to a boil. Alright guys, so once the split peas start to boil, you're going to let it cook for about 10 minutes. Okay, you don't want it to cook for too long. You're going to let it cook for until you're able to take one of the peas out of the pot and basically break it in half using your fingers, okay? So it shouldn't be too soft, just it, sh it should still have a firm touch to the peas when you try to break it, but able to be crushed if i'm making any sense all right so this part is very important so don't overcook the split peas okay so you're going to want to remove any extra water left in the peas all right use a strainer and drain out the extra liquid and set the peas aside and let it cool and while it's cooling we're going to work on the dough the dal puri or where i'm from we call it roti skin so let's get started with our roti skin Alright, so you're going to get a large bowl and in the large bowl, we're going to add in our flour. So I'm adding in some flour and next I'm going to add one packet of active dry yeast. Then I'm going to add a little bit of butter and some salt into the flour mixture. And then you want to use your hand to crumble the butter into the flour mixture and mix all of those ingredients together. Okay guys, so once all of the dry ingredients is very well combined, we're going to start adding in our water. So with the water, you want to add it in little by little. You don't want to add too much at a time, okay? You don't want a sticky dough in the end. Just as much, you don't want a dry dough at the end. It needs to be just right. So add the water in a little at a time. And basically, you're going to add it until the dough comes together and you have a ball so the dough should be in the shape of a ball all right so just use your hand to work it and knead it together and once the dough comes together you're gonna knead it for five minutes okay knead it for five minutes until it's nice and soft and elastic -y, but not sticky if the dough is too sticky you can add in a little bit of flour to help you get it right and it should look like this once it look like this you're going to spray the inside of the bowl with some non-stick cooking spray all right you want to grease the bowl to help it to not stick in the bowl you're going to cover the bowl with a clean kitchen towel or some paper towel and let it rest for 30 minutes and while the dough is resting, we're going to go back to the split peas we cooked. And what you're going to do is you're going to put that split peas in a blender or I'm using my Nutribullet, but I think a blender will work best for this. And basically you're going to grind the peas with a few seasonings until it's very grainy. So in the blender you want to put the split peas with a few cloves of garlic and some fresh thyme and then to that i'm also going to add in some roasted jera and some amchar masala okay so put all of those ingredients together and you're going to grind the peas until it's it's very fine okay so on to our shrimp to make our curry shrimp you're gonna need to cut up some potatoes so i'm making shrimp roti today you could also make curry chicken roti with this recipe whatever you want to make as your meat with your dal puri skin okay so cut up the potatoes into some small cubes you don't want to have it too big because then it'll take longer to cook all right so next you're gonna put a pot over medium heat and once it's hot you're gonna add just a little bit of oil to coat the bottom of the pan 
Next, I'm gonna add in some curry powder. So my favorite curry powder to you is the Chief brand curry powder, it's my favorite. And next, I'm also gonna add a little bit of turmeric powder into there as well, and I use Chief's as well, okay? So after you add those two into the pot, you're gonna give it a stir, mix it with the oil, and you're gonna let that cook for about 40 seconds. Let the curry burn a little bit. Next, I'm adding in my potatoes that I cut up at first, and you're gonna mix the potatoes with the curry mixture in the pot. Then I'm gonna go in and add some water with the potatoes. You wanna add enough water so that the potatoes can cook, okay? And once you add in the water, I'm gonna cover the pot and let it come to a boil. Once it starts boiling, you're gonna let the potatoes cook until they're soft and basically tender. So now's a good time to also add a little bit of salt with the potatoes, all right? Okay, you guys, so now for the shrimp. So the shrimp is pretty easy. You clean it. Once it's clean, we're going to season it up a little bit. So I'm using some freshly minced ginger, and then I'm going to also use some green seasoning. I have a green seasoning recipe on my YouTube channel. I'll link it down below for you guys. You can check it out if you'd like to. I'm also going to season it with some onion powder, garlic powder, salt, black pepper, ground cumin, and paprika powder. And basically you just want to mix all of those seasonings in with the shrimp. And if you want, you could let this marinate for about an hour in the refrigerator, but I usually just let mine sit for 5 to 10 minutes on my countertop and then cook it right away. So yeah. Also, I don't know if I mentioned, I didn't mention it, but you also want to add a little bit of curry powder when you're seasoning the shrimp too, okay? All right, you guys, so after about 10 to 15 minutes, your potatoes is, should be cooked and it should look like this. Use a fork or a spoon or something to break one of the potatoes in half and it and if it's soft, then it's ready, all right? So now I'm gonna add in my seasoned shrimp and you're gonna mix the shrimp in with the potatoes. So you're also gonna need most likely to add a little bit more water. Don't add too much, because we're not making soup. You wanna add, and shrimp cooks in like four minutes. So just add enough so that you have a little bit of gravy with your shrimp at the end, okay? So I would say add maybe half a cup or a little less. Just remember that the potatoes is gonna thicken the sauce a little bit too so keep that in mind when you add in the water and yeah you add enough water and let the shrimp cook for about four minutes until it turns pink and the last step I'm gonna do is add in some freshly chopped cilantro make sure you taste the sauce the shrimp to make sure that it has enough salt and, and that the seasonings is right okay and yeah you add in your fresh cilantro and that's it you guys that's it whenever I'm making stewed anything or curried shrimp chicken any meat curried or stewed I like to end it by adding in some fresh cilantro or sometimes fresh parsley adds a nice kick to it nothing crazy all right so yeah that's it for the for cooking the curry shrimp you guys if you want you can smash some of the potatoes to thicken up the sauce a little bit Okay, so back to our dough. So it's been 30 minutes, it's finished resting. So I'm gonna take it out of the bowl and I'm gonna place it on my countertop. So before I place it on my countertop, I'm gonna dust my counter with a little bit of flour, okay? This is to help to prevent it from sticking. So place the dough on your counter surface and now what we're gonna do is use our hands to basically divide the dough and cut it out to make small balls you want it you don't want it to be too small so i'm just using my hands and as you can see i squeezed it out and you're gonna roll the dough to form a nice smooth ball okay so do that until you've formed all of your balls so just remember at this part the more dough the bigger the ball is the bigger your dal puri will be and the smaller the ball is the smaller it'll be so keep that in mind and keep the size of your roti tower or your griddle whatever you're using to cook the dal puri in 
keep the size of it in mind because you don't want the roti skin to be bigger than the pot. Also another thing that helps me is while I'm forming my dough, it helps I take a piece of paper towel and I wet it. So take a damp piece of paper towel and place it over the dough. This will help it stay moist and keep it from drying out. Okay, so next I'm going to take my rolling pin and dust it with some flour as well. And you're going to, once you finish rolling out all of the dough, you're going to roll out one ball at a time to get it to be somewhat flat you don't want it to be completely flat but you want to roll it out into the shape into the shape of a circle and get it flat so we're about to start stuffing it so once it's flat you're gonna get your chickpea mixture you grind it earlier and you're gonna take two tablespoons from it and put it in the middle of the dough Okay, so if you need help closing the dough after you stuff the split peas mixture in the middle, you can wet the end of the dough and then you're just gonna close it together, all right? If the dough is giving you problems to close, all you need to do is uh, push the filling down in the middle of the dough. It will close, I promise you, it will close. You just need to push it down, take your time, close it up, and then you're gonna roll the dough once it's closed back into the shape of a nice smooth ball. Set it aside, cover it to keep it moist, and finish doing the rest of the balls. Finish stuffing them. Okay, and once you finish stuffing all of your little balls, it's time to roll them out again. So you're going to work one at a time, use your rolling pin, make sure you have extra flour working with to keep the dough from sticking on the rolling pin or your counter surface. And you're basically going to roll it out very flat and very thin to make the roti skin, okay? So if the dough starts tearing on you, you're going to use the extra flour to dust the top of the dough wherever it's reaping and that's going to help it uh, stay intact and not tear on you okay so yeah just use your rolling pin and roll it out into the shape of a big circle and you want it to be uh, pretty thin so a few tips to help you while you're rolling out the roti skin is to uh, use the, the sides of your rolling pin to keep the dough in the shape of a circle if you notice the uh, dough is becoming misshaped wherever it's not in the shape of a circle use the edge of your rolling pin to roll it out there and fix that little error okay so this is something that's worked for me in case you need help with that um, and yeah you guys once it's rolled out and it's pretty flat you're gonna start cooking the roti skin so to cook it, I usually use a roti towel or also like a griddle pan or even a frying pan works, okay? So yeah, let's get ready to cook up. Okay, so get your pan and place it over medium to medium high heat. And once it's hot, you're going to add in a little bit of oil. So you could brush in the oil or just throw a little bit in there to start, alright? And you're also going to need a little bit of oil and like a small bowl for a brushing the alpuri as it cooks so next we're going to place the rolled out roti skin in the pot and basically you're going to cook it for about 30 seconds you don't want it to burn at all and after you place it in the pot you can use a pastry brush and basically the oil you have in the small bowl you're going to brush the top of the roti skin with that oil all right and it's gonna start like popping up like that that's totally fine so after about 30 to 40 seconds you're gonna flip it to the other side also you can use a spatula to help keep the dough flat and press it down if it's like puffing up too much especially on the ends all right and then yeah you're gonna flip it after a few seconds you want that first side to get just slightly golden not too brown at all all right and then you're gonna let that side cook for another 40 seconds or so again and also you're gonna while it's cooking brush the top of the roti skin with some more of that oil all right and then you're gonna remove it and place it on a plate and then you want to cover it with a piece of parchment paper so for each of the skin that you complete 
and cook you're gonna place it on top of the other one and cover it with another piece of parchment paper you can also use paper towel this will keep it nice and soft and keep it from drying out on you okay So yeah, I'm going to finish rolling out my roti skin and cooking them and then we'll move on to the final steps. Alright guys, so the last thing I'm cooking, you can actually cook this first and set it aside, alright, is the pumpkin. So where I'm from, we call this stew pumpkin or because I'm adding curry, you could call it curry pumpkin, but I love adding this in my roti. It, it, it just makes it taste so much better as if roti needs help to taste better. But anyways, you guys, sometimes I like adding this. So what you're going to do is get your pumpkin and you're going to, you could peel it. Sometimes I don't peel it, just wash it really well and the skin kind of dissolves when you're cooking it. But yeah, so you're gonna peel the skin off. Today I'm taking it off and using a knife and then you're gonna cut up the pumpkin into some smaller pieces. And once you finish cutting them up, you wanna cut them into small cubes. Don't cut them too big because it'll take longer to cook. You're gonna place them in a saucepan with some water to boil. I'm also going to place in a few cloves of garlic in there as well and you want to add a little bit of salt in the pot all right cover the pot and let it come to a boil once it starts boiling you're going to let the pumpkin cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until they're tender so you should be able to use a knife or a fork to pierce one of the pieces of pumpkin and it should be tender okay Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it right inside that pot and I'm going to use a potato masher to mash up the pumpkin and the garlic. If you want, you can remove the garlic and dice it up if you'd like, but I just mash it up with the pumpkin. I'm trying to keep this recipe easy, simple, less work, alright? So yeah, mash it up in that pot. If there's still liquid in the pot, you can remove it before you mash it up or keep it over high heat and let it uh, evaporate so next what I'm gonna do is once my pumpkin is mashed up I'm gonna add in a little bit of oil and then I'm gonna also add in a little bit of sugar you're gonna mix all of that together and you're gonna let the pumpkin saute and cook for about three minutes or so all right while it's cooking I'm gonna season it up a little bit more by adding in some curry powder and salt and black pepper that's it I'm keeping it pretty simple and just mix all of those ingredients together with the pumpkin and that's basically it you guys let it saute for about two to three minutes and taste it make sure it has enough salt and turn off the stove all right you guys and finally we are finished making our shrimp roti so now it's time to put it together so i got my plate and i placed one of the roti skin on the plate and next what i'm gonna do is add a little bit of the sh curry shrimp and potatoes in the middle of the roti skin okay add as much as you like but don't overstuff it because you have to fold the dough the roti skin in the end all right so add your curry shrimp and potatoes and next I'm going to add in some of the pumpkin we cooked, so add that right next to the shrimp or on top of it. And after that, you guys, if you have some tamarind sauce and you want to add that there, um, tamarind sauce on, on roti tastes so good. Or if you like pepper and you want to add some pepper sauce, go ahead. And then you're going to close up your roti, fold it up. So, so you just fold it up, you take one side, then you close the other side, and then the bottom piece, and then the top piece. <laughs> Hopefully that helps you guys. Um, but yeah, once you've closed the roti, you're going to... You could, you're gonna cut it in half and enjoy your roti and that's it you guys that is it so delicious can never have enough roti but yeah that's it for this delicious recipe my 
my roti skin started tearing on me but it's all good it's still gonna be delicious but yeah you guys that's it for this yummy delicious recipe shrimp roti and pumpkin in the middle so delicious if you've never tried your roti with pumpkin if you've never had a veggie roti you should give it a try and yeah that's it for this delicious recipe you guys i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you give the recipe a try let me know in the comments down below let me know how it turned out take your time when you're making it but yeah thank you guys and i'll see you in my next video bye